welcome back to my channel. This is Yummy Brown of Yummy Koshology and today's video is unboxing of this new furl hook. This is their new streamline hook and their new Odyssey hook. So these are the new colors that they have in this line of furls hook. So first is we will unbox this and at the same time we will test the performance of each hook. And also the second part of the video will be an easy tutorial for this mini skirt and as you can see here it is the matching skirt of my Demi Granny Square top and this is inspired by Netflix hit show Stranger Things Demogorgon so it is Demi Classic Granny Square's set of mini skirt and top it will also be available in a written pattern version so please check the description box box below for the link of the written pattern. So if you like my content that talks about crochet and styling our crochet pieces, please smash that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. So let's head to the first part of the video. So I have here the box from Furl. This is what the box look like and it is sent out to Australia. Um, I think it is roughly less than two weeks. And it's quite sturdy, it's quite secure. The box is big enough and well protected inside. It has a brown paper filling to keep the hook from moving around inside. Other stuff is there too. The receipt, the hook itself and a little promotional card from Furls. So this is the hook itself. It is wrapped with a brown matte paper and I have the two hooks inside. I ordered the Streamline and the Odyssey. I have a few of Odyssey so I will start with the Streamline to see what does Streamline furls look like. This is the box. It is matte white finish. It has a name here, what kind of streamline there is. And this is what's inside. And there's the hook. And I've got the new one that they just released in celebration with their 10 years anniversary of the furl. And they released the glitter, the clear glitter streamline. And this is what the hook like. It is size 5 or H. And there's the name of the hook, the furls. And it is quite bold and well um, engraved and I like it that way. So it's easy, it's not easy to fade over time. It's very nice to hold on to if, if you hold uh, your hook like this. But I hold my hook this way. Um, it takes a little bit of practice but I like it. It's not heavy. This is what the tip of the streamline look like. And it's beautiful glittery body. I just love the way they glittered it up. This one here is the new Odyssey color. So this is their new Odyssey um, color for furls. This side of the box is your sizes guide and I think I ordered the I or 5.5 millimeter hook and the name of the brand furls Cyber arts and this one is a glossy black finish box and there's a name in, in the front Odyssey and this is the bottom of the hook look like I mean the bottom of the box look like so this is the new color that they added to the Odyssey family and this one is the emerald and again it has the same shape as the streamline but this one is made of nickel and it's quite heavy but not to the point that it is a budge or a fuzz to use the the weight of the hook actually balances your stitches that's what make odyssey set aside from other line too compared with the streamline hook it is quite light it is very light but the odyssey line of um, furls hook it's heavy this is the size that i have it is i or 5.5 millimeter hook the other one is h which is five millimeter hook you hold on to your hook like this it is very nice um, for your grip this hooks it actually feels comfortable but again i hold my hook this way and it takes time for me to practice and get used to it so let's proceed to the testing the odyssey so I started with the Odyssey one because I will be using the Streamline for the tutorial. 
As you can see here, this is how I hold my Odyssey furl hook. And again, as I've mentioned before, the furl is a little bit heavier compared to the streamline one. It is heavy because it actually balances your stitches and make it beautiful. So this one here is the streamline, the glitter streamline. And again, if you hold your hook this way, your hand actually grips or curl around the curve of the hook quite well. It is well designed for a grip or way of holding a crochet hook this way. But the streamline is a lot um, lighter than the Odyssey. In comparison, they're both beautiful hook. They're both well-performed hook. Um, the only difference is the other one is quite heavy and the other one is lighter. And it seems like I crochet faster with the streamline uh, with my usual kind of grip. If you are interested in the hook, you can definitely visit the link below. This is not a sponsored video. I just want to share to you guys how beautiful these hooks are. So now let's proceed to the second part of the video, which is a tutorial of the mini skirt. The materials that we will be needing for this mini skirt, I am just using a mixed acrylic and wool. Just wind it so I will be crocheting in continuous. And of course, we will use the furl 5 or the H, which is the streamline for this tutorial. And then you will get your measurement. You can lay check a measurement all the way to the waist, which is a little bit tight when I squeeze the skirt into my bum. So it's stuck around my bum. So my suggestions is get the measurement just in the hip. So at least when if it's in the hip, it will actually fit all the way up. And then we will just add an elastic in the waistline once we're finished with the bodies of the skirt. Okay, again, don't take the measurement into your waist. Instead, it's take the measurement from the hips. So now let's start with the foundation of the skirt. I have here my acrylic yarn and make a knot to start the foundation. So I have to make a foundation that is measured or as long as my hips measurement. Okay, so whatever is your hips measurement, please make a foundation as long as that. I have a foundation of 95. Once you have your foundation, slip stitch to your first chain. So we will be working now in rounds. Then chain one, and then half double crochet in every stitch. So wrap your yarn, insert your hook into the first stitch, Wrap your yarn again and pull it through all the way to the third yarn in the hook. Okay, so that's a half double crochet. And then continue your half double crochet in every stitches. Okay, again, remember your work is in rounds. So this is how the furl streamline perform. I am having a little bit of difficulty using it because again, it's too big for my hand and I'm not used with furl streamline. I am used with the Odyssey since I have a few of them. And at the same time, I'm still actually at the beginning of my foundation, which is quite difficult sometimes to work on with foundation chains, okay? So as you can see here, I have to actually find a stitch before I will insert the hook. Now that I've finished all my half double crochet um, stitches around, first is make sure your panel, your pieces is not twisted before we will slip stitch to the first um, chain one that we made. And then slip stitch to the chain two that we made. Okay, so there you go. That's the beginning of our skirt. And chain of two, and in the next two stitches, you have to make double crochet each. Okay, so one double crochet in the next two stitches. And there you go, there's your first, first cluster, okay? Chain one and then skip one. In the next three stitches, you have to make one double crochet in each stitch. It's one. Two. 
two. And three. And there you go. So that's how our pattern goes for this row of the skirt. Chain one, skip one, and make a double crochet in the next three stitches. So you have to repeat the pattern again around your skirt until you reach in the very beginning. So I'm here at the end and I have three stitches left. Double crochet and then chain one and skip this one, then slip stitch to my chain two. So this is what it looks like now. Uh, next row is chain two and then on your spaces between the three double crochets from the previous round your chain spaces in the previous round you have to make a cluster so cluster here means three double crochet in one um, chain space here is your first cluster and then do not make a chain instead go straight to the next chain space and make a cluster okay so again do not forget not to make a chain i'm not making a chain here between my clusters because i want my skirt i want it a little bit fitted i'm here at the end and i have one chain space so i will just make a cluster here meaning three double crochets in this chain space so the chain two at the beginning is not count as a stitch and then slip stitch to your chain two at the beginning so i have here my second collar now and again i just wind it i just tied the second collar to my first collar but you can definitely change color every row if you feel like and chain two and every time there is a space in between the clusters you have to make or put clusters in it okay it's not a chain space it's more on a space between the clusters from previous round so always use that space between the clusters from the previous round and put the clusters in there again do not chain one unless you are in size up i think so if you are um in size large or you just have a very nice big booty i think you can chain one but in my case i didn't chain okay, so continue your clusters around until you reach here So this is how our pattern goes, just cluster in every spaces be between the two clusters from the previous round, okay? So you have to repeat that around. And repeat the row until you have long enough for your own preferences, okay? In my case, I don't need much length since I'm tiny. So this is how I figured out how long my skirt is, just between here and... Um, not old before um my knee okay so this is how long my skirt it it sits between 12 to 13 inches so i have here the last row of my skirt and in total i have 25 and it is it is 12 inches long again you can always make yours a little bit longer if you want to now grab your elastic and stitch each end. I have here mine already stitched each end. I just hand sew it. And this time, make sure you're facing in the right side of your skirt. So make sure you're facing in the right side of your skirt. And then insert your hook at the back. We will start our work at the back of the skirt and from there we will make another row where we attach the elastic okay this is the waist part 
and I just insert my hook here and make sure the elastic and the crochet pieces are hooked together and make a single crochet in every stitches of your crochet pieces okay so we're working in the waistline of your skirt right now and we're using a single crochet in every stitches around of your skirt and make sure you sandwich or you put the elastic between the stitches okay so in order to do that you have to hold on to your elastic and your crochet skirt at the same time while making a single crochet in rounds so i have here my last stitch for the elastic row and i can cut off my yarn And then this time we will add the edging of our skirt. Insert your hook at the back again, the back stitch, I mean the back of your skirt and secure the yarn. This time make a chain of, of three, one, two, and three, and then double crochet in the same chain space. Chain three, one, two, and three, and then again, on that space between the clusters in your skirts row, you have to put triple pico a single crochet, chain three, okay, and then single crochet again in the same space, one pico, and then chain three again, single crochet again in the same space. There is your two pico, and then chain three again, and single crochet again in the same space. Then there's your three pico, and chain three, one, two, and three, and then in the next space from the two cluster between the two clusters you have to make a V V here is double crochet chain two and double crochet again in the same space this is our pattern three triple pico and then V so chain three again and then triple pico in the next space so again, triple pico is single crochet, chain three, single crochet, th chain three, single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. Make sure you have three pico. And then chain three and V in the next space between the two clusters from the previous row. So continue your pattern again around the skirt until you reach in here your two chains. And we're here and we will end it with a slip stitch that's our first row for the edging and chain three and double crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous round then this time chain three make a V in the second pico okay so double crochet chain two and double crochet that's what a V is and then chain three again and then if you see a V from the previous round, you have to put triple pico, okay? So triple pico is single crochet, chain three, single crochet, and chain three again, and single crochet, and chain three again, and single crochet. So that's what a triple pico looks like. Okay, so basically saying it's the same pattern, it's just that we alternate it from the other, um, from the previous row. Okay, so chain three and then put V in the middle or second pico. Okay, so repeat your rows until you reach at the end. And we're here at the end, ending this row with slip stitch to the chain two at the beginning. Repeat your pattern of triple pico and V, alternating these rows as many rows as you want it to be, okay? 
So in my case, I only have four rows of that repeat two rows. I didn't make it that long because um, I don't want it mini skirt. So I am here the last row of my edging, which is the fourth row, and I'm ending it with chain three and then slip stitch to my chain, the beginning of the row. The total is I only have four rows of this lacy edging triple pico. Okay, you can make yours as long as you want it, but in my case, this is how long I want because I want it mini skirt. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for staying with me today. And don't forget to check the description box below for the written pattern of the demi top version of this skirt. And also the skirt will also have a written pattern version. So just check in the description box below for the availability of the written pattern. So if you like my content, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I hope to see you again sometime next week. Goodbye!